Hello Vinyl Community! I just made another video and um, just to show you some of the records I've been listening to. Um, all pretty well known stuff. So, um, Little Queen by Heart. I'm not much of a fan of sort of the hard rock and hard blues rock and all this kind of stuff, but um, I really like the sound of this record. It's, it's, it's quite... Um, Beautiful, very, very professional, very clear sounding uh, hard rock music or a, or a sort of a, a late 70s rock and roll. Um, great stuff, extremely cheesy cover, but um, that's how it was back in the day. And uh, um, wonderful music. I think this was like their, I don't know, second, third album maybe? Uh, 1977. Yeah, another great uh, album from 77. Um, so uh, from 1975 comes this album, Here I Am Again by Denise LaSalle. No, Denise LaSalle is kind of my uh, personal soul slash disco queen. Um, I've always loved her music and I also very much appreciated the fact that uh, she was one of the few um, really big 70s uh, soul disco singers who also wrote their own music. Once again, I mean 80% of this album is all her compositions, which, uh, which kind of shows in a sense that um, well, honestly, um, if if you was a if you were a, if you were a singer that kind of got uh, the music from your producer and you kind of sang or did what have been asked of you, so to speak, um, it oftentimes presented sort of pop songs that uh, were supposed to be appealing to a very very large crowd and. Um, and that way also were a little bit trivial in a sense. Now because she wrote all of her songs herself, sometimes uh, she kind of tackles uh, um, so, uh, sort of critical ideas uh, that you usually would not find or hear on a on a such a funky disco record like this. I mean tracks like "Married but Not to Each Other" and stuff like that. So I kind of appreciate that that this is um, this is this is a funky soul music but um, with an artist who had her own handwriting who had her own ideas her own compositions and that's why I'm a, such a big Denis LaSalle fan yeah the next one I just I just bought this one just for fun not that I need it this is Two Tribes by Frankie Goes to Hollywood do not mind this terrible sticker here but I can get this one off. Um, of course, this is a 12 inch uh, including material um, from their first album, Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. But um, just have a look at the backside because this tells you a lot about who Frankie goes to Hollywood, who they were. So it shows a photograph uh, of uh, Ronald Reagan and Maggie Thatcher side by side, probably in some kind of. Uh, anathem moment um, and the whole text here I mean there are there are all kind of tables here that uh, describe the the weapon the nuclear weapon proliferation through UK and America around the world um, and it's a very uh, it's a very the text here it's a very aggressive attack on uh, the establishment so very truly wonderful. I mean, we're talking like we're talking about 1983, probably 84, when the, uh, 82, probably when this came out. I guess if memory serves, this came out on Island, uh, 1984, indeed. Yeah, these guys meant these guys meant business, you know. Um, so this was not just a kind of a fancy. Uh, dancey gay band or something they they were really um pissed off <laughs> about the <laughs> pissed off with the establishment and uh i mean their song relax was 
quite was banned in many countries. Um, yeah, so I'm glad I got this, and uh, it just made me like the band even a little more. So then I gave, gave this one a listen. I haven't heard this for quite a while. Shake Your Booty by Frank Zappa. I've almost forgotten how how heavy it actually is in parts. And there's really certain there's uh, some uh, sort of a heavy metal type action going on in some parts of this double album. Um, Adrian Bellew playing guitar on it. So uh, systematically, I'm tracking down all albums with Adrian Bellew on it. It seems. <laughs> I wonder if I ever finish, if I ever will have them all. So, um, like so many albums by Zappa, this is a combination of a live album and, uh, well, basically a studio recording. I mean, there's there are so many overdubs that you pro it's probably impossible to tell which part is part. And this was a very interesting method uh, to, to create albums, because he did that actually a lot. Um, so... Um, I think this allowed him to create so many albums and still in such a great quality by uh, using a lot of uh, parts of the engine out of a live recording and then adding uh, studio tracks to it. It's actually an interesting way to do it and I don't think many people ever went that way. This is sort of a very Zappaistic uh, method to make music, right? Yeah, great record, but also a complete classic album. So, uh, what could I say about it that has not been said uh, many times before? And finally, this one La Fête Sauvage uh, by Vangelis. Um, this was uh, another album uh, as a soundtrack to a documentary by Frédéric Rossif. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you if you come to terms with the sort of a certain cheesiness that's inherent in this album, it's actually a nice uh, listen. Uh, there are only two tracks on this album each side one. The first one is 20 minutes long, the second one a little about above 18. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a classic Vangelis album. I think it's like 1978 maybe? Yes, 1978. So, um, nice one. So, uh, have a nice day and um, see you next time. Goodbye.